Hey, Richard, how you doing? We're about more than six hours away from ringing in the new year, and whether or not it's a happy new year or not could depend on how much time we spend on social media. What's going on? First of all, we're here at the bar on New Year's Eve. How cool. What What an awesome assignment we have, Talbot. Great assignment. Tough, tough job. Tough job. Tough gig. Someone's got to do it. <laughs> but you know what? This is really interesting. The University of Pennsylvania, out with a landmark study, the first study to draw a direct connection between using Facebook and depression. Okay. Now they found, Talbot, that those that drastically reduce their Facebook, their Snapchat, their Instagram usage, their mood improved markedly, and in many cases, right. their depression sometimes went away altogether. Now why is that, Richard? So they said they think it's because when you're on Facebook and these other platforms, you look at how other people are living their lives, you think, my goodness, they're doing a lot better than I'm doing. And you get really depressed about your own situation. And in a lot of cases, like my own, they probably are, but we don't need a constant reminder. Now, one thing that does boost the mood, and a lot of people do this to kick off the new year, is exercise, right? Not me, though. No? You no. don't exercise? Don't, don't believe in it, Talbot. No, well, what I do is spinning. You know, I lay in bed at the end of the night, and the room spins. Spinning, yes. My workout partner's name is Ralph, and he's a bit chunky. So am I. We might be doing some spinning after the bar tonight, Talbot. <laughs> yeah. But, but you know what? It's tough to stick to it. That's a lot of people, a lot of people, they say in January they want to go to the gym, right? Yeah. They can't stick to it. Another study coming out of the U.S. found that even if you pay people cold hard cash to go to the gym, no, no, they no. still don't go. <laughs> uh, so they offered people 30 bucks or a $60 Amazon gift card if they went to the gym at least once a week. The first week of the study, a lot of people did show up. By the third week, hardly anybody went. So there's not a big incentive to go, although research has found that one in five North American adults uh, are out of shape and need more physical exercise. So we should go, but even for some dollar bills, we won't tell them. That's right, and you know what? It's not just the exercise, it's also the diet, and you're not going to lose any weight going to this sausage party that you're about to tell us about, are you, Richard? So this, I want to show you this. This is uh, last year at New Year's Eve. This is Lebanon, Pennsylvania, and they're a big thing. You know, in New York, at Times Square, they dropped the crystal ball to yeah. yeah. So here they dropped 200 pounds of bologna made in this town <laughs> of Lebanon. That's a lot of meat coming down there, Talbot. Well, this is a good reminder to all the fellows out there. If you drink too much on New Year's, your bologna could drop as well. So <laughs> moderation is the key. Any, I'll let that slide because we're in the bar. <laughs> Anyways, they're changing it this year. They have a paper mache mascot who needs to be going to be carrying a smaller amount of bologna. The, the town's mayor said they wanted to shake things up to bring more tourists to Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Will that work? That's where you're going to go for your Christmas, va your uh, summer vacation. Processed meat and the spins. That's how I sum up this chat, Richard. That's a new Year's Eve. That's a good New Year's Eve for me. I've had worse than that. Hey, it's not bad. Well, thanks for joining us, Richard, and a happy New Year to everybody. And the next hour of news starts now.